scripture today is found in Mark chapter 8, verses 31 to 38. He then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, chief priests, and teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and after three days rise again. He spoke plainly about this, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But when Jesus turned and looked at his disciples, he rebuked Peter. Get thee behind me, Satan, he said. You do not have in mind the things of God, but the things of men. Then he called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it if a, for a man to gain the whole world, yet forfeit his soul? Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words, in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes in his Father's glory with the holy angels. The Word of the Lord. In our continuing journey to the cross, we move ever nearer to Jesus fulfilling his purpose on this planet, the reason for which he came. And we know from what happens in a short while in the Garden of Gethsemane that Jesus is both fully aware of his coming suffering, fully committed to doing the Father's will no matter what it costs, and also fully aware of the fact that it is going to cost him absolutely everything. He knows the agony that awaits him. For the joy set before him, which is the ultimate outcome of his suffering, the redemption of people for God's very own self. For that joy set before him, he will endure the cross and suffer its shame. In our passage today, Jesus is teaching about what is to come shortly. He's teaching that he will suffer. He's teaching that he will be rejected by the spiritual leaders of his day. He is teaching that he will be murdered. And after three days, after three days, though dead, he will rise from the grave having expired at the brutal hands of men, he will, inspired and filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, be resurrected from the dead. Now in Mark's Gospel, after Jesus shares this, Peter takes Jesus to the side and starts to kind of lay in on him. He actually starts to rebuke Jesus, if you can imagine. Matthew gives us a little more detail into the scene, and in his gospel we learn that here Peter has just identified Jesus as the Messiah, the Son of the living God, and Jesus has blessed him for that revelation. Anyway, here Peter takes Jesus to the side and rebukes him, and Jesus in turn rebukes Peter with these words, Get thee behind me, Satan, he said. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Peter's compassion for Jesus gets in the way of hearing Jesus' actual words, of hearing the truth. Compassion is a good thing, of course, though like mercy, it's a little bit like a dog that needs to be kept on a leash. If it's allowed to run unrestrained, it can cause a lot of problems. Mercy needs to be subject to the will of God, or else the human sense of mercy can skew God's greater purposes and truth. But we're back with Jesus, who is now with a crowd he's called to himself. Here he says some powerful words. He says, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Have you ever wondered what that means? Well, to deny yourself, simply put, means that you don't do the things that your flesh wants to do that are not God's will for you. To take up your cross is to accept, to embrace the hardship that you face with faith, trusting God to deliver you, and even to make you more like Jesus through the suffering that is in your life. 
To follow Jesus means to make the daily choice every single day to follow Jesus, to walk with him, to obey him in all things, and to live in the joy of the Lord as you walk in good conscience with God. May we continue to reverence our suffering Lord, even as he approaches the cross, in his humanity with some fear and trepidation for sure, but also with the absolute determination that humanity is worth it. Humans are worth his suffering if, by his death and resurrection, he will create a people who belong to God through faith. You are worth his suffering. For he who was God on his way to the cross was fully aware of your existence, of your life as it is today. And for the joy of you, of your choice to embrace the gospel, to embrace this cause for which he suffered, he willingly entered life as God in the flesh, and then endured the shame of the cross, all for the love of you, all for the love of the person nearest you and all for the love of those who would make the choice to love him in response to his most profound love for us. How profound? Well, he said at one point, greater love is no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. And then about a week later, he did that very thing for you, his friend. You are a friend of God. It gets no better than that, my friend. Be blessed as you love him and as you serve him today. Amen.